Okay. Hey guys, it's me, Saran. I'm back with another video. Um, I normally don't do videos this fast. I just put up a video yesterday, but it seems like this week is going to be high up on my weird racist o meter. Uh, seems like this week's just going to be chock full of the racism. So who knows if I'll, if this will be my last video. I normally like to do two videos a week or if I will continue. Um, we'll see. We'll see how the rest of the week plays out. Um, it's Wednesday and this has been all over the internet all day. I'm sure you guys have heard about it, but in case you haven't heard about it, um, there has been a new story about, you know, police brutality, um, at a traffic stop against the black family. Uh, this happened in Hammond, Indiana. Um, police used a taser to remove a man from a car during a traffic stop. Um, it was recorded, the whole thing was recorded on video. Um, a man and a woman were driving in a car with their two children in the back. I believe the ages were 14 and 7. Uh, the woman was Lisa Mahone and the man was Jamal Jones. I've been reading, I don't know, there's been like some conflicting reports. Some of them say he's her friend. Uh, other reports say he's her boyfriend. He says repeatedly in the video that those are his two children in the back and they're also her children. So that leads me to believe that they're in a relationship. I don't know why people are describing them as friends, I guess, it's because they're not married. And, you know, there's a whole lot of other, you know, stuff that goes along with that in the media. Maybe I'll discuss that in a different video. But for now, we'll just say they're in a relationship. They're boyfriend and girlfriend. They're parents. They're the parents of these two children that are in the back. So they were on their way to the hospital because Lisa Mahone's mother was in the hospital. Um, and I guess they were in a hurry and she didn't have on a seatbelt. So they're pulled over by these cops. Um, for her not having a seatbelt, that's which is a routine traffic stop. I've been pulled over for not wearing a seatbelt. I've been pulled over for talking on the phone while driving, you know, stuff like that. And uh, the police ask her to give her license, um, registration, you know, all that paperwork, which she does. Now, it's interesting to note that the minute they're pulled over, her 14-year-old son pulls out his cell phone and starts recording, okay? The video footage is like 13, 14 minutes long because he records literally the whole entire interaction from beginning to end. That's very telling because that lets you know that this 14-year-old boy already has a distrust of the police to the point where the minute they're pulled over, he pulls out a phone to record. So he already knows. I'm gonna have to record this because some shit is probably about to go down. So what does that already say from Jump about the relationship between people of color and police forces in this country? It's not good. So moving forward, they ask her for her license and her registration. She gives it to them. They take it. Whatever. Boom, boom, boom. Her boyfriend who's sitting in the passenger seat, they come back and they ask for his license, which is interesting, right? Because he's not driving. He has a seatbelt on. He hasn't done anything wrong. He's literally, he hasn't said a word. He's just sitting there. He says, oh, I don't have it. I don't have my license on me. Um, I think he, I believe he says that his license has been suspended. It's been, um, you know, like taken from by the DMV because he was driving, I guess, without insurance. He says like he has some type of insurance like issues going on, so he doesn't have a license. But he pulls out multiple other forms of identification, and he also has a book bag where he says he's carrying around, you know, the ticket and the paperwork stating that, you know, his license has been taken by the DMV and whatnot. So he tells the police he's going to reach in his backpack to get the ticket out. He reaches in his backpack, the cops immediately pull a gun. Immediately, they pull a gun. These people have two children in the car, a 14-year-old and a 7-year-old. Why are they pulling the gun? He said, I'm reaching in my backpack to get out the ticket. Why are they pulling a gun? As soon as they pull the gun out, the woman, Lisa, she dials 911. She calls 911. She's talking to the 911 operator. She's like, I've been pulled over. I have my two children in the back. You know, I don't understand what's going on. The police said they stopped me because I don't have a seatbelt on. I gave them my license and registration, and they just pulled a gun on me and my family. And they're, now they're ordering us to get out of the car. So now at this point, the police are ordering them to get out of the car. Now, this man and woman don't want to get out. They don't want to roll down the windows. They don't want to get out. They keep making sure that the boy is recording. They're afraid. 
right? They're terrified. They're scared of the police. They don't want to get out of the car because they're afraid of what the police are going to do to them and their children. The woman even says to the 911 operator, because the 911 operator says something like, oh, if they're asking you to get out, why aren't you getting out of the car? She says, I don't want to get out because police are shooting black people. I don't want to get shot. I'm here with my children. Like, I don't want, we don't want to get out of the car. Like, we're scared. So they're afraid of the police. Again, what is the purpose of the police in this country? I thought the purpose of the police was to protect and serve, right? To protect us. We're not supposed to be afraid of them to the point where we get pulled over, routine traffic stop for not wearing a seatbelt, we're afraid to get out of the car, we have guns pulled on us, you know? So then as, as it progresses, the police get more and more aggressive. There's two or three white cops and these four black people, this black family in this car. So the cops now are asking them to get out. The woman says, I don't want to get out. I don't want to leave my children in the car. The man is like, why do I need to get out? What, what am I doing wrong? Tell me what to do, and I'll do it. They say, oh, we need your ID. He says, I've given you all the forms of ID that I have. I can give you my ticket. I'm trying to give it to you, but you don't want to take it. We see him. He has the yellow ticket, the slip of paper in his hand. The window is rolled down about this much because they're afraid to roll the windows down. He tries to hand the paper out the window. They don't want to take it. They refuse to take it. They're ordering him roll the window down, roll the window down. He's like, I don't feel comfortable. I don't want to roll the window down. So now the police get even more aggressive. You don't want to roll the window down? You don't want to get out of the car? You're getting out of the car one way or another. This is literally what they're saying to them. You're getting out of the car one way or another. You want your kids to see me drag you out of this car by the fucking window? Whoa! Whoa, police officer! We were down here. Now you jumped up here. You took it way far. I don't know if you guys have seen that, like that um co i think it's college humor video where the the black guy is like sitting on the steps eating the ice cream and the cop rolls up and's like what are you doing and within five seconds he's turned into a stormtrooper from star wars i felt like that was literally what i was watching while watching this video because the manner with which the police went from zero to ten was nuts it was off the chain so the guy's like, you know, I'm trying to comply, like, we don't feel safe, we're not comfortable, you know, she's on the phone talking to the 911 lady, she's getting hysterical. The next thing you know, the police are breaking the window. They pull out, um, I can't think of what it's called right now, but it's like one of those jack type things, all police have them, like in the back. They pull out the win. they bust out the window. Now the little girl, seven years old, she's screaming. She's screaming and crying hysterically. The boy is still recording. You see the glass go everywhere. The glass gets all over the kids. They bust out the window. They reach in the window with the taser and they tase him. And you hear him screaming. You can like see him like shaking and screaming. They reach in. They drag him out. They handcuff him. They tase him some more while he's handcuffed, right? They tase him some more while he's down on the ground handcuffed. Clearly, even though he's not a threat to anyone at this point. And then they pull him up and he's like, please take the taser like off of me. Like, please take it off. Take it off. He's begging. They take it off. They arrest him. Baby girl's crying, screaming hysterically in the back. Mom's crying on the phone with the 911 um, operator. And the boy, the 14-year-old boy, has now recorded the whole thing. So in light of this footage that's been released, they filed a, a federal lawsuit um, against the police department of ha Hammond, Indiana. The police department is, like, countersuing them. They're saying that, you know, they had every right to arrest him because he was refusing to comply with the police. Um, and he was resisting arrest, you know, because he wouldn't get out of the car, he wouldn't say his name, he wouldn't, you know, basically he didn't do what they wanted, so they felt like that gave him the right to arrest him. Now, I'm not going to argue over the leg legality of that. I did make another video, Fear of a Black Planet, where I spoke about another shooting with LeVar Jones, where LeVar Jones did comply with everything the police officer said. The police officer pulled him over for something similar, not wearing a seatbelt. He had taken his seatbelt off as he pulled into a gas station. The police officer asked him for his license and registration as he went to reach to get his license and registration out of the glove box. The cop shot at him four times and then said, I was afraid I thought you were reaching for a weapon. So I'm not going to get into arguing about should he have listened to the police? Should he have not listened to the police? What are the legalities of listening versus not listening? Does that give the police the right to arrest you or shoot you? You know, if you guys want to know what I think about that, you can feel free to watch my other video. What I want to talk about is something that I saw on CNN. They did a panel, of course, uh, Legal View. Um, it went, it aired yesterday, noon, at noon, and now, you know, there's video of it on the internet. And 
the panel got into a, a screaming match, basically. They were screaming at each other on CNN, where a legal analyst named Paul Callen, who's a white guy, said that the police were legally protected in taking the actions that they did. That, basically, if you're a police officer and you feel like you're being threatened, under the law, you can kind of do whatever you want, and you're not wrong, you know? And another legal analyst, a black woman named Sunny Hostin, she agreed, you know, that with, with the, under the technicalities, yes, you know, they didn't do anything wrong. But then she went on, because it was a panel and they were having a dialogue, she went on to say, I'll, I'll read it, I'm not going to paraphrase. She went on to say, this family was tortured for over 13 minutes. Those children were t traumatized, and guess what? The law as it stands right now probably protects the police officer's actions. As a woman of color, I don't know what to do because this could happen to me, this could happen to my child, this could happen to my father, this could happen to my husband. What do we do about the inherent racism that we're seeing over and over and over again in these United States, in these traffic stops? And Paul Callen, the white guy, jumped in and goes, there's no evidence here that this is a race incident. Sonny goes, give me a break. This is about race. Give me a break, Paul. Paul says, if this were a white family, Hassan cuts him off. If this were a white family, this wouldn't have happened. This would not have happened. Paul, well, you have no idea. Sonny, I do have an idea because I live in the United States as the person that I am. And she means a person of color. Paul, listen, it's wrong. It shouldn't have happened. But to turn everything into a racial issue, Sonny, it's not everything, but this is, this is, this is about race. This is what my video is about. White people in particular, I mean a lot of people do this, but white people in particular, have a habit of saying, why are you making everything about race? First thing Paul jumps in and says, there's no evidence here that this is a race incident. We're talking about white cops brutalizing a black family. That's what we're talking about. Race plays a part, you know. I've made countless videos about systematic racism and subconscious levels of racism and police brutality and like all these different things that to keep your head buried in the sand and say that there's no evidence that this is a race incident, what evidence do you need? Paul Callen, you know, any of my white, you know, YouTubers that are watching, what evidence do you need? Because this is an argument that you see a lot. You know, black people pulling the race card, making everything about race. Why does this have to be about race? You know, with the thug kitchen racists. I don't understand why this has to be about race. There's no evidence. There's no evidence. There's no evidence. You know, you could have a group of black people all get together and literally tell you these are our experiences, you know, with race and systematic racism in this country and white people will literally say well I need a source nothing like that has ever happened to me so I don't know first of all nothing like that will ever happen to you because you're white and so therefore you're benefited white privilege in this country just because it hasn't happened to you doesn't mean it's not real it doesn't exist for those of us that are people of color and then to say there's no evidence he literally said there's no evidence here that this is a race incident what constitutes evidence you know white people like to act like race and racism is like the boogeyman the boogeyman under the bed with you know red eyes and sharp teeth and claws that as soon as you see him you know that's the boogeyman you know like they need evidence that it's a race incident like what would be evidence like if the cops had like went back to the car and like pulled out their white hoods and like grabbed their crosses and lit them on fire and then like came back and said like nigga 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 like that would be evidence like that's not gonna happen that's never gonna happen like we're we're living in 2014, damn near 2015, you know, the year is almost over. Race, racism is not going to take the form of a monster. Racism is not going to take the form of a clan member. Racism is not going to take the form of, you know, a skinhead with, you know, black Doc Martens with fucking white laces stomping on your, your, your face talking about you're a fucking coon ass nigger. Like, it's 2014, like... That's not even what, what racism looks like anymore. Like, I don't know if it's, you know, if it's because we've, we've seen so much, like, footage from, you know, the civil rights movement that we just, like, automatically connect racism with, you know, like, snapping dogs and, like, lunch counters and, like, back of the bus and stuff like that. But racism doesn't have to be blatant. Racism doesn't have to be 
obvious. Racism doesn't have to be in your face. Racism doesn't have to be dressed up in skinheads and, you know, things like that. And this is racism against all different types of people, not just black people, you know? Like, I don't have to walk up to somebody and call them a fucking wetback to be racist against Hispanics, you know? The whole illegal immigrant movement and border patrol and stuff like that. That's racism, but you'll have people saying the same thing. Well, there's no evidence here that this is a race incident. There's no evidence that this is about race. What is evidence? What is the evidence? What do you literally need? Like, you literally needed them to, like, call this man nigger? Come here, boy, as they, like, tase him and drag him out of the car? Like, it's ridiculous. It's absurd. It's absurd that... White people, with their systematic white privilege, with where they stand on the side of the race lines in this country, because there are lines and there are divides, to stand there and demand evidence from victims. You know, this is what we're talking about, right? Damn near victim blaming, right? A girl says she's raped. Well, you know, I need the evidence. You know, I need, what were you wearing? You know, what were you doing? You know, were you drunk? Were you high? Were you at a party? Were you making out? You know, where's the concrete evidence that this is a, that this was a rape? You know, and I don't want to call Paul Callen a racist because I don't know him or anything like that. But what he said was racist. You know, every time you, you tell people that are the victims of social injustice, racism, sexism, you know, homophobia and things like that, that they need to provide evidence and they're the marginalized group and you are the group with the privilege You're de and you demand evidence to back up their statements, you're further marginalizing them. You are oppressing them. You are a part of the problem. So any of my fucking viewers out of there, if any of those words and statements have came out of your mouth, you're a part of the problem too. You know, he says, oh, if this was a white family, Sunny goes, this wouldn't have happened. He goes, you have no idea. She says, I do have an idea because I live in the United States as the person that I am. Ding, 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 ding. You know, I live in the United States as a person of color and I know that things that have happened to me would not happen to a white person would not happen to a white friend, a white boss, you know. And and this is the basis of so many conversations between black people and white people because, you know, so many white people say that. I remember I went to a Mike Brown rally and a white girl, you know, spoke up and she said, I just learned about this type of thing a year ago because I was raised in an affluent neighborhood and I was raised to believe that the police were my friends, that anything I needed, I could go to the police if I needed help, if I was in trouble. And I told her then, for us, for black people, it's completely different. We're raised to believe that the police are your enemy and they're out to hurt you. And whenever they can, they're going to try to shoot you, kill you, arrest you on some trumped up charges, charge you with some shit you didn't do, period. They're going to try to hurt you and you should stay away from them. That's two completely different sides of, of, of life, you know? That's two completely different sides of a divide. So you can't look me in my face and tell me if this were a white family, it would have happened. Like, I'm telling you, no, if it were a white family, it would have never happened. These white police officers would have pulled over a white family and been completely respectful to them. But since they pulled over a black family with a big, scary black guy sitting in the passenger seat, they felt like they acted accordingly. And then for him to say, oh, to turn everything into a race issue... Why do white people do that? Like, we're not turning things into a race issue. Like, do you guys think we, like, really enjoy having racism being used against us? Like, do you guys think we really enjoy being seen as second-class citizens in our own country that we want to just, like, pull that card out of our pocket and throw it down, play the race card? Like, this is not something that we enjoy. Like, we don't enjoy living in fear that we could get gunned down by the police at any second. Like... This is the way that it is. No one is turning anything into a race issue. No one needs to provide any type of evidence to you to change your mind or to convince you. Racism is not the boogeyman. Racism is not a Klansman. Racism is not a tornado, fucking monster, Voldemort creeping in the night. Racism is real. It's every day. It's happening. And it's affecting all of our lives and everything that we do in this country. Like, you guys need to, like, get over it and, like, understand that racism is real and it's happening. Shit is not getting turned into a race issue. You know, for us, everything is about race. 
you know, the legacy of slavery, which I have a video on that as well. We carry the legacy of slavery in our skin every single day. Every single day someone looks at us, they see slavery, okay? That's not something you can run away from. That's why people like to say all this post-racial colorless shit so they don't have to deal with their white guilt because they know their parents probably, not parents, but you know their ancestors probably owned slaves. So don't deny it. Try to work with us and work on it and move forward. Um, I'm going to include links because this is like super interesting. It's just really off the chain to me that they're like, oh, evidence, evidence. Where is the evidence? What evidence do you need? You know, anyone that watches this that's white, that feels the way Paul Callen did, please leave me a comment letting me know what would, what would be evidence to you. Like, would it literally have to be someone saying like, nigger, like, boy? Show me your papers, boy. That's what you would need. Let me know. I want to know. I'm interested. Um, I hope you guys like this one. This week has been a crazy week, just chock full of racism. So we'll see if I make any more videos, if this is my last video of the week. I hope you guys have a great, amazing weekend. I will be in Ferguson this weekend uh, for the protest. Hopefully I can do some video blogging, vlogging. I don't know. I'm new at this YouTube shit. Hopefully I can get some stuff up while I'm there. If not, I'll definitely have some videos up about it next week. So if I see you guys later on this week, I'll see you. If not, have a great week and have a great weekend. I'll see you guys next week. As always, food for thought. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.